Happy to be joined by Trine women's basketball coach Andy Rank. Coach, how are you? I'm good. Good, good to be back. 14-3 and three last year, and the three were three tough losses to Hope. Uh, they were ranked number one around the country, and they lived up to that, didn't they? Oh, for sure. They're, they're a really good basketball team. Uh, Brian does a really good job with his, his ball club, and they're always uh, a very tough opponent for us. No matter who he has or whatever, he's always gonna, they're always going to play hard, and they play a style of uh, defense that, that we are not accustomed to seeing a whole lot of. They overplay everything. They get in passing lanes, and so they make it tough on us. But uh, I felt like we, we were right there with them each game last year. So coming into this year, the nation has taken notice, and you are ranked in the top five for Division Three by D3Hoops.com. Um, you know, right up there in the conference rankings as well for preseason. Um, you know, some coaches say, "Well, what does that really mean?" But it is nice to be noticed nationally, isn't it? Yeah, I think that over the years we've gotten a lot more national attention for right. sure. I think it all started back when we we made a trip to. Um, Las Vegas, I think it was about five years ago, and we played in D3 Hoops Classic, and no one had really heard of trying, and we played Amherst mm -hmm. in a game out there, and at that time Amherst had won like 54 in a row and won back-to-back -back national championships, and we played into a six-point basketball game there. And I think that's kind of what got us on the, the map a little bit, and I think as we continue to uh, win and, and do the things we've done, I just, just think we're just keen to keep growing our reputation for sure. Thrilled for Tara Benevich to be a preseason All-American choice as well. And, you know, you look at her stats, 10 and a half a game. It doesn't really pop off the page, but it was nice to see that the, the folks voting took notice of her total game, right? Yes. Tara does, does a lot of things for us, and, right. and um, she's a really good shooter, obviously. She can really sling that thing, and, um, but she does a lot, a lot of different things for us. Uh, and so she's, she, I think over the summer she's done a really good job of, of knowing that teams are going to try to take away the three ball from her and she's getting to the basket a lot better. Um, and we've talked about her in the past about rebounding more from us because she is a six foot guard. Mm -hmm. um, so she does all the little things for us too. Um, but yeah, she's going to be a, a, one of the main focuses for anybody that we play against. But uh, she, in the first two exhibition games this year she's really shooting the ball really well. So. We're excited about her, her this year. Kelsey Taylor, one of the top bigs in the conference, uh, you know, now a veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it just seems that you've seen her continue to improve. I, I panicked, I don't know, a month ago. I saw her walking around campus with a boot on, but she assures me that she's good to go. How has her preseason been, and is she ready for the conference battles? Yeah, she did. She again, another one that I, all of my girls worked really hard over the summer. Sure. You could you could really tell when they came in the preseason and, and started working that they they all would work really hard. But Kelsey really worked at it. You can see a real change in in what she's doing, uh, especially the first couple of games. I think Kelsey also realizes um, that she needs to be uh, a real leader for us this year. She's probably one of our big vocal leaders, and so she's kind of taken on that role for us as well. Um, I just, I just, she just needs to continue to finish around the basket and rebound the basketball. Mm -hmm. If she does those two things, uh, sky's the limit for her for this year. You have a lot of flexibility at the guard spot. Uh, you know, you started Artis last year. You've got um, the, the Argyles among others. How do you see that guard rotation sort of settling down with Kayla Wildman at the shooting guard? Well, I think we got a lot of talented players. If, uh -huh. if as we talk as a coaching staff, I think this is probably one of our deepest teams we've ever had here. Um, I'm very comfortable going almost 13, 14 deep on the bench if we need to at certain times. And, and it gives us a luxury of if someone maybe not getting the job done, let's pull someone else back in. Uh, but we got a lot of girls that we can pull off that bench whenever we need it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think some people might be surprised by some of the girls that come off the bench this year and play for us. Um, but we are very deep at that position, um, and we are deep in a sense that we're very um, mature at that, 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 that position as well. Most of our girls, I got six seniors and, and, and five juniors, you know, and so we're a, a very veteran basketball team, which helps. Um, and then these freshmen that have come in are, are, are just kind of learning the ropes from them. Take us through the conference, the MIAA, uh, kind of a top-heavy conference the last couple of years with you and Hope, and then maybe Albion a rung below. Uh, looking at it now, coming into it, any big changes that you expect to see, or uh, will it play out the way that it's expected? 
Well, I think obviously hope is the, is the, the cream of the crop. Okay. I mean, until someone knocks them off, uh, hopefully it's us. Right. Um, but, you know, they're very, very good. Um, with the COVID year that everybody got last year, three of their top players are coming back. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps, him, helps them a lot. Um, but I, I, I like where we're at. Um, I think our conference is improving. I think every team is getting better every year. Um, we got some really good coaches in the league, so it just continues to get better. Uh, Albion, uh, they've been really good over the last few years. They lose one of their best players in Rain Hinton, which is uh, formal, formidable for them every year. Um, I think Calvin's going to be back. I think they got a really good lineup uh, too. And then Alma and, and all the teams that are down towards the bottom are, are getting better. So we just got to play every night. If we just come to play every night and play hard every night, um, I like our chances. I've talked to you about this before, but you've unlocked something as a coach that uh, when I was a football coach and I've seen other coaches struggle to find this, and that's to, to find a way to play that the players really do care about the team concept more than their own numbers. Since I've been covering your team, you haven't had anybody that's had just eye-popping stats or uh, you know, averaging 20 points a game or anything like that, and yet you win almost every single night. And the players, when you talk to them, they don't even know what the stats are. They just want to know if they won the game. How have you created that culture in this team of truly selfless players working so well together? We talk about it a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it, is, it is a um, tradition that was set for, forth by the teams that were before this mm -hmm. team. Um, and if you go ask any of our girls that have graduated from this program, um, not one of them cared about any kind of individual stats. They just wanted to win. Mm -hmm. And that, that attitude has just carried over to uh, this team. And it's just a tradition that just carries on. You know, uh, Brandy, who you know, was a first team All-American for us uh, when she graduated, Brandy could care less <laughs> about whether Brandy got 10 shots or she got 20 shots. And she didn't care whether she scored 10 points or 20 points. She just wanted to win. And Cassie Williams was a girl that was just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Montana Martin, I could go down the list of all these girls that could care less about their minutes, could care less about their stats. They just wanted to win. And that's kind of the, the thing we have carried on as a tradition here. And this team is no different than those teams. Mm -hmm. And we preach that all, of, all the time. We, tell, we try to tell the stories of the legacy that these girls have left. And now this group, the seniors that we have here, it's their turn to leave their legacy. So hopefully they do that this year. Uh, Shea Herbert's one of my students and uh, one of my favorite players on your team. She battled through multiple knee injuries to yep. continue to play basketball. She graduated. She's a notable graduate from the squad. She's our co-worker now, though, Coach. So <laughs> it's kind of fun to have Shea around, even though she's not on the team anymore, isn't it? It's really funny how uh, they all kind of stick around all the time. We got Shea that's working here. We got Brandy now that's yep. working here. And I, I see girls, uh, Shaylee Duff's around because she's around in, in the area. And I know that there will be many a games that there's five or six of them returning players that are in the stands rooting us on. And I know even if they're not there with us, they're watching uh, on TV or live stream and they're rooting us on. So it is a culture of family that we have developed and it is a strong family. I mean, we just had two girls I graduated from us get married this summer. You know, and there's 14 or 13 of them all there. It's like mm -hmm. a trying basketball reunion there. It's just kind of really neat to see see that family atmosphere still just progressing through our program. Coach, can't wait to, to get a chance to see your team, the 2021-22 version of Trine Thunder Women's Basketball. All the best to you this year. Appreciate it, Andy. Thank you so much.